Good morning, Miss JB and our beloved friend. First of all, I want to say thanks for giving us a chance to presenting to you about a competitive force and value chain analysis of e-commerce. So as what I said before, uh, the team the team that have been that has been decided by us is about e-commerce. So my name is Vincent Diadi. My name is Julia Fandestito. My name is Putri Dania Sajida. My name is Gilbert Lus Jonathan. My name is Anika Surya Putra. And my name is Subianto Arya. So we are from team five and let's watch a presentation. So what is e-commerce? E-commerce is basically a business model that lets firm and individual buy and sell their things over the internet. So uh, for the example of the e-commerce, we got some e-commerce from Indonesia. Uh, there's Shopee, Tokopedia, Lazada, or or another e-commerce. And from the interna international e-commerce, we have Amazon, eBay, Baba from China, and many more. And uh, sometimes there is a specific e-commerce for a specific item. Like from Indonesia, we have Bineka. Bineka is like the e-commerce for computer spare parts. So you could find a computer spare part from Bineka with more competitive price. So let's talk about the Porter, the Porter Five competitive force e-commerce in Indo in Indonesia. So there are five, there are four aspects that could be a determ determining factors that could determine our enterprise strength and weaknesses. So the first aspect is threat of substitute product. I could say hi because the most common and well-known substitute product, or in this case, let's say the way to shop of the e-commerce is the offline store such as shop, market, or even supermarket. The substitute products or way to shop are a serious threat to e-commerce because this way to shop is got more trust than online shopping. There are a lot of online scams that have happened in Indonesia which causes a loss of trust in online shopping, even through the e-commerce. And Indonesian always wants to do the culture of the bargaining in every transaction they make, which is, this is something that couldn't be done through e-commerce. So the second, there is supplier power. The supplier power is low because there are rules are set by the brand and supplier have to follow the code of conduct set by them. Most of the e-commerce brands are highly cautious regarding their supplier relationship and set a code of conduct related to the quality, labor, and wages. And also, the firm is very high, but the supplier doesn't have any option. Uh, and number three, there is some threats of new entrants in e-commerce industry especially about the customer trust. Because for example, there is a new e-commerce website. People will find it difficult to trust the site if it didn't have a lot of good reputation and all sites do not guarantee trustworthiness. So it is difficult to build a brand image and there are a lot of trust issues in this country. For the buyer's power is high. I can say hi because there is a wide selection of apps that users can use however they like. Various applications such as Tacopedia, Shopee, and Lazada offer a variety of interesting promos. There are interesting features of each app that other competitors don't have. Users only need enough memory on their mobile phone to select the app what they want. Various affordable postage charge allow users to choose a trusted expedition service. 
Usually, there are also some of the same products but sold on different platforms. Users have the right to buy on platforms that sell the same products but have cheaper prices and cheaper expedition service. And for the rivalry among existing firms, it's high because of the large number of players in the market. The number of local and global brands in the e-commerce market has grown, and this has also led to the higher competition. And for the value chain analysis, uh, the support activities are from infrastructure included general management, planning management, legal, finance, and accounting. For the human resource department, including uh, recruitment, retention, training, uh, and R&D. For the technology development, uh, it's continuous improvement in printing and finishing assets. For the procurement of resources, it's purchasing paper, printing consumable, and other finishing consumables. Uh, and in the primary activities, there are five. Uh, inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, and also services. Uh, in inbound logistics, there are reception, yes, uh, storage, inventory control, and transportation planning. In the operations, uh, they got uh, people who work for printing and finishing. And for the outbound logistics, uh, they got workers from warehousing, order full, fulfillment, transport, transportation, and distribution. And from marketing and sales, uh, they got partnership and advertising and promotion. And from the service, uh, we, we also know as customer support. And from this uh, primary activities and support activities, uh, we can make a competitive e-commerce. So uh, thank you, Miss uh, Gaby and friends, for watching our presentation. So that's all. That was our all presentation. Thanks for watching and listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.